Republicans retiring from positions of power. When all things come to an end, and my eighth term in Congress will be my end point. Who's calling it quits, and how those retirements will affect the 2020 campaign in Texas. There's a new battleground state, Texas, and it has 38 electoral college votes. Democrats and the race for the White House shift focus to the Lone Star State. How campaigns are ramping up in Texas as candidates prepare for the big debates in Houston. Hello, and thank you for joining us for State of Texas. I'm Josh Hinkle. A shakeup in Texas politics after several Texas Republicans announced they're not going to run for re-election. The announcements came in the span of one week, but the impact will reach through the 2020 election season. Congressman Will Hurd said Thursday that he will retire at the end of his term. The former CIA officer said he's leaving office to work to solve problems involving technology and national security. Hurd is the only black Republican in Congress. He has criticized President Trump's rhetoric and policies. He represents the 23rd district, which stretches from San Antonio into far west Texas and down to the border with Mexico. Heard narrowly defeated a Democratic challenger in 2018. The district is considered a toss up in 2020. Two more congressmen from Texas announced plans to step down after several terms on Capitol Hill. Houston Republican Pete Olson says he won't seek re-election in 2020. He says he wants to spend more time with his family. Olson served six terms in the House. His district is considered a toss-up in the 2020 election also. Congressman Mike Conaway also announced he's stepping down after 15 years on Capitol Hill. The Midland Republican led the House investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. He's a senior member of the House Intelligence Committee, and he chaired the Agriculture Committee until Democrats retook the House last year. Conaway said, fierce partisanship makes it harder to move the agenda when his party does not control the chamber. Uh, you know, it's, uh, being, in the more, being in the minority is a frustrating experience. Um, as anybody who's worked with SALT would, argue, would, would confess that the partisanship has become too intense. Uh, it's gotten to be worth a lot more important about the jersey than, than the issue that we've got at hand. Conaway represents the 11th congressional district. That's a traditionally Republican seat. Another key resignation is happening at the state capitol by one of the most influential members of the Texas House. Richmond Republican John Zerwas announced that he's stepping down. His last day will be September 30th. On October 1st, Zerwas will start his new job. He'll be the executive vice chancellor for health affairs in the University of Texas system. Zerwas is a physician. He served in the Texas House since 2007. This past session, Zerwas chaired the House Appropriations Committee that made him one of the key players in determining the state's budget. So what does all this mean? For perspective, we bring in Jeremy Wallace, who covers politics for the Houston Chronicle, and politics reporter James Berrigan from the Dallas Morning News. One week, three congressmen. What is going on here, really? Well, I think it's very clear that it is no fun to be in the minority in the United States Congress, especially when you've been in the majority. So all three are Republicans who were in the majority uh, just you know less than a year ago, and now they're all in the minority having to try to find out how do you exist in an environment where you have a lot less control over the agendas in Congress, uh, and then you have to come home and you have to you know, raise tons of money and try to win re-elections. Will Hurd, you know, he gave uh, Republicans a few terms in a district that could easily go Democrat. Is that what you probably think is going to happen? I think Will Hurd is such an important one for the for the Republican Party in Texas because it's such a shock that he's leaving. He won three straight consecutive uh, elections in a, a district that was had gone back and forth, swinging between Democrats and Republicans. And sure, they were near. Uh, elections, they were very tight. The last one was under 1,000 votes, but he had delivered in a more than 70 percent Hispanic uh, district and had made a name for himself as sort of a, a, a dissenting voice from President Trump, but one that still represented a conservative value. So I think that the, the departure of Heard is is a big hit for the Republican Party. Yeah, in his short period of time, he was only in Congress for what will have been six, you know, six years. But you know, like his bipartisanship uh, that he's had to. Uh, apply in that kind of a tight district has been really notable. In the 
last Congress, he had 13 bills that he sponsored, or resolutions, and 10 of them were co-sponsored by Democrats. You can't find that in the United States Congress today. That is rare you know, to see a guy who is continually talking to Democrats uh, from the Republican Party trying to find bipartisanship. So his loss, you know, not just from a political standpoint, but is this like another you know, member who you, know, you kind of could count on that would kind of work with the other side. And one more thing about Will Hurd is that he was, I think, the only African-American Republican in Congress. Right. I think that's also notable because another thing, big thing that he he said a lot was that the Republican Party needs to to, to be open to diversity, to be open to, to people from different backgrounds. And him leaving, I think, is a big departure. He had one big thing that he said in his goodbye mm -hmm. message was that, which was that, uh, 200 years ago he would have been three fifths of a person, and he wants the party to be open to to people from different backgrounds. I, I think it was a very important statement. Well, essentially, his district, too, uh, you know, he made the point that it's a 71% Hispanic district that he was able to carry. And it's the only district along the U.S.-Mexico border that is actually represented by a Republican right now. Every single one from here to California is represented by a Democrat, except for Will Hurd in the uh, United States Congress. And he had distinguished himself by, by yeah. being a big border advocate on issues like security, on issues like not a border wall, but smarter technological ways to protect the border. We also had a big departure for the Pro Republican Party on state level, also um, State Representative John Zerwas, who was the House's chief budget writer. He has said he's stepping down as well. What does that mean for um, state politics? Well, he's certainly a blow. He was a, certainly a trusted, uh, high-level Republican, you know, in, within the uh, Speaker Bonin uh, crew at this point. And so I think losing him is uh, kind of a, a big blow, but it's also a big blow because the district he's leaving, he's from Fort Bend County, which has just become a total battleground. You know, like, his, he won his reelection pretty comfortably, you know, the last time around, but that district is changing overnight you know there's so you know, it, it's the immigration into Fort Bend has been notable it's a county that now has uh, about 25 percent Asian 25 percent Hispanic it's one of the most you know diverse places you'll find and so I think you know just like we're talking about with the members of Congress there becomes a reality of like you know holding on to districts that are changing demographically you know every day so mm -hmm. it's certainly a, a different kind of a race now in that area yeah and I think Beto O'Rourke made a big play for Fort Bend County. I, th I think uh, that there, there, there was that sort of looking at the changing demographics of it, but no doubt it's a big hit for uh, leadership in the Texas House, a two-time appropriations chairman, a guy that was trusted by Republicans as well as Democrats. Um, it looks like he's got a nice job lined up yeah. for himself, uh, so I'm not sure that he was um, afraid of an election challenge, but uh, definitely a big blow either way. Thank you both for being with us. No, Thanks, glad Josh. to be here. Coming up, campaigns have eyes set on Texas. Who's setting up shop to win your vote? It's an essential stop for the key players in Texas politics. Everybody who comes to the Texas Tribune Festival every year comes away smarter, more engaged. How a big event in Austin aims to make a difference in the 2020 campaign. There's a new battleground state, Texas, and it has 38 electoral college votes. The Democratic presidential primary is moving toward Texas. After two debate nights in Detroit, the next round is happening in Houston. You'll probably see fewer candidates because of tougher standards to get on the stage. And while Texas has two major candidates in the race, politics reporter Phil Prazen shows us how another one is setting up early in the Lone Star State. California Senator Kamala Harris already qualified for the Houston debate. Since Texas is the second largest primary state after Harris's home state of California, the campaign tapped Austin-based senior advisor Emmy Ruiz. Texas is really important to us. We're very committed to building this infrastructure, and we actually started organizing. In the coming weeks, she'll promote Camp Kamala's online recruiting and training tools, hoping to build a large network of supporters. Former El Paso Congressman O'Rourke and former San Antonio Mayor Castro already have political networks here, but since Harris leads them in the polls, Ruiz hopes to build a net to catch their supporters if they drop out. We have a lot of friends in different campaigns. I know that she has a lot of friends, uh, people who are on the debate stage with her. And so we want to make sure that we're an accessible campaign for everyone. 
To some extent, Texas is a microcosm of the country. Longtime Republican political advisor Ray Sullivan says the Texas primary will weed out the wannabes from the serious campaigns. It takes a lot of volunteers and donations to win statewide. We have approximately 22 media markets. It's very expensive to communicate on television and to travel the state. You really need a well-honed campaign and a well-funded campaign to compete. The next debates are September 12th and 13th. The Texas primary is next March on Super Tuesday. Phil Prazen for State of Texas. A new poll has some encouraging signs for Democrats who hope to face Donald Trump in Texas. The poll from the University of Texas at Tyler showed Beto O'Rourke 11 points ahead of Trump in a hypothetical head-to-head -head matchup. But he's not the only Democrat polling ahead of the president. Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and Kamala Harris also led Trump by one to two points in the UT Tyler poll. We want to get some insight on the debates, the campaigns, and the political outlook here in Texas. We're joined by Jason Johnson, a Republican strategist who's worked with Ted Cruz and Greg Abbott, and Manny Garcia, the executive director of Texas Democrats. Welcome. Thanks for Thank having you. us. What's your perspective on the debate? Look, I, I think it's really exciting that we're having a conversation about how to best uh, get health care to everybody, um, how to best tackle immigration reform um, at this very important time when families are being separated uh, on Texas soil. Um, it's a good conversation for the Democratic Party to be had. Um, you know, we're also very excited that, that a, a debate is coming to Texas, um, which makes Texas the biggest battleground state in the country. Yet another indicator um, about how the National Party and other entities are looking at Texas and what's, go what's going to happen in Texas. Yeah, I want to get to the Texas debate in just a bit, but I wonder, did any issue particularly stand out to you? I think if, from a Republican perspective, if you look at the second round of debates, you saw a more intense version, frankly, than you saw in, ver in debate number one, which you would expect. But I think night one and night two, what you've seen, and I love this as a Republican, but frankly, I agree with Manny, it's great for Democrats. Unlike Republican Party sometimes in our debates, the issues are being fleshed out. And th a very bold contrast will be presented for the voters come November. Uh, and there's no doubt, I think everyone now understands, and most are happy that are Democrats, the, the center of the Democratic Party has definitely moved to the left. And that was on full display. You know, health care seemed to be one of the biggest topics that was brought up during the debate, but we heard some very specific, not as much talked about in the past, um, issues like uh, reparations, assault weapon bans, freedom dividends. Mm -hmm. What of those issues do you think works in Texas, and could anything really hurt anyone trying to make any headway uh, in Texas? Look, Texas is one of the most diverse states in the country, right? Uh, and you're looking at what is the winning coalition, what is the winning electorate, and the rising Texas electorate, um, as this state continues to change, it's important and incumbent on those candidates to be able to talk to those issues um, that really keep people up at night and that, that are worried about it, right? And so, you know, are you going to have real strong criminal justice reforms? Are you going to be make sure that you're responsive to ending gun violence? Um, are you going to be able to talk about um, what it means to be a majority minority state um, in, a, in a country that's increasingly diverse? Um, and I think what we're seeing from the Democratic presidential candidates is that they're ready to take race on. They're ready to talk about uh, talk about this and really, you know, ready to lead a conversation that ultimately gets our country towards healing. Um, and that means, you know, significant policy reforms. Your thoughts? Yeah, I'd take a different approach to that. I mean, let's take two issues. One, the focus on climate change and it being a quote-unquote existential threat, this idea of having 10 years. How many hundreds of thousands of Texans work in the oil and gas industry, for example? I think it'll be very interesting when that debate does come to Houston to hear those same candidates stand on stage, including Joe Biden, and say, look, in 10 years, the internal combustion engine needs to go away. What does that mean for every Texan? What does that mean for our economy? I think it's going to be great to watch that play out. Well, the oil and gas industry is also becoming the energy industry in Texas, and you have some of the same companies leading wind, wind production. Yeah, we're the number one producer of, of wind right? in the country, and, so, and that's great. You know, it's, it's uh, to say, you know, you're going to lose these oil and gas jobs, I mean, they're energy jobs. Yeah. Um, and we're seeing this increasingly diversify these portfolios. Um, and I think what Democrats are arguing is that we need to sure, make sure that we take this on, um, that, that we're not willing to hold back and really hold back ge future generations of Texans um, because we're unwilling to tackle tough policy issues. So I'll take one more. Many mentioned race. When you have every Democratic candidate for president stand on the stage and call the President of the United States a racist, right, here's what you have to think about with regard to Texas. Are you telling the millions of Texans 
who voted for Donald Trump in 2016, that they too are at worst racist, at best supporting a racist. I don't think that's going to play very well. I really don't. Jason, Manny, thank you very much. Thank you. Texas Tribune just announced the lineup for their festival next month. The annual event is an essential stop for key players in Texas politics and also for people on the national political stage. This year's event includes discussions with at least two presidential candidates and a deeper look at the people and issues shaping the 2020 campaign. Everybody is interested in the presidential race first and foremost. But of course, what else do you have on the ballot in 2020? In Texas, you have a Senate race, John Cornyn up again, a bunch of Democrats who want to run against him. You're going to have a legitimate fight for control of the Texas House going into redistricting. You're going to have maybe as many as six or seven congressional seats in Texas that are up for grabs. This is serious stuff, and I think um, heading into an election season is almost the best time to have the Texas Tribune Festival planned because you can stand back from that uh, date a year out and say, what are the things that people are going to be thinking about? We are an official partner of the festival, which runs from September 26th to 28th in downtown Austin. In May, we brought you the story of Jamie Mayberry. He's been missing for 20 years. We looked closer at his case and found new clues that could help his family find closure. Right. Tell me your name. Terry Mayberry. Um, Terry, tell me a little bit about your family's story, what we have been kind of investigating for a while. We grew up in Kennedy, Texas, come from a large family of eight kids. Pretty much everybody knows us down there, and my brother and Jamie, James Mayberry, uh, one particular night, Jamie went off uh, with a couple of guys, according to my niece, and never returned. Hello. We're working on a story about a missing persons case just down the block, right up the road, across the street, 1999, Jamie Mayberry. Mayberry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I really do feel that the police department was a little biased towards my brother being who he was, transgender. I'm trying to find people who lived here in 1999 to see if the police talked to them back then. No. No, police never came and asked any my, that I know of. He didn't come by and talk to me or anything. You know, what we have accomplished so far, it, it's brought awareness to, to the community for sure. We, we went from being buried and dead to uh, there, there, there's hope and, and there's closure right around the corner. This is 27 years worth of files. Yeah. Not yet. Ah. It is. Found it. All right. James, Jamie Mayberry. The research, the study, the, the work, the hours put into what you guys put in to get something heard and for a family you might not even know. NamUs is the National Missing and Unidentified Person System. There are more than 15,000 active missing persons profiles in NamUs' is public database. We know that about 8% of the cases are in Texas, and that includes Jamie Mayberry's case. Jamie Mayberry's profile was compared to 17 unidentified bodies in the NamUs database to see if there was a match. Unfortunately, there wasn't. We've hit roadblocks in Jamie Mayberry's case because it's technically still open. The city of Kennedy has denied us access to all records except for a single document, the front of the police report. There is one person we'd like to talk to, I believe, who I would characterize as a witness at this point. We know she was questioned in Jamie's case, but no one was ever charged. And today, police tell us that she's only a witness. You were up there in, uh, at a lady's house threatening you, you know, to bear arms at you. Josh, I'm a reporter from Austin. We're working on a story about Jamie Mayberry. I wondered if you might know him. You can get off my property right now is what you can do. Did you know that the Kennedy police are looking for you? Before I use force. Keep it up, because there are people just like me, many families, and you know that already, that, that want to, to, to have you guys, wish they could have you guys in their lives, whether nothing comes out of this at all, that we know and we feel that what you guys have done for us, it means more than what anybody has done thus far.
You can see the full Mayberry Texas investigation online now. Just look for this link under the Texas Politics section of your station's website. Thank you again for joining us for State of Texas. I'm Josh Hinkle. We'll be back next week to bring you an in-depth look at Texas politics.